Hi again, Red Hat developers. This is Jason with the Red Hat Developers Program here at Summit 2017 in the Dev Zone. Today we have Thomas Kvarnstrom here from Red Hat, and he's going to be showing us how, how we can secure microservices using JWT and the Red Hat SSO. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you. So, oh, that was loud. Sorry about that. So, we are, like, like mentioned, we're going to talk today about uh, how to secure your microservices using uh, JSON Web Tokens. And uh, so, if you haven't heard about JSON Web Tokens, uh, you, you have probably not worked with security for a while. <laughs> it's the new hot thing regarding security and, and how we secure different services. Uh, but, but it's actually spawned out of, it's actually an open, JSON-based open standard. And it's very similar to another uh, security standard called SAML. But SAML is XML-based, and this is JSON-based, of course, hence the name, uh, which also makes it less verbose. There's, there's less network traffic having to go to actually secure your services. It's, that's one of the reasons it's being used for big internet of scale type of solutions. Uh, but another reason is also because it's very easy to use it to, to, to authenticate APIs and do things like that. So, so that's what we're going to talk a bit about today. And the other thing we're going to talk about is Keycloak, which is an open source project upstream and upstreams project. And we also have a product, downstreams product from that called Red Hat SSO, which stands for Red Hat Single Sign-On. And Keycloak is a community project for open source identity and access management and it supports J, uh, JWT. So, to explain a little bit about what, what's new with JWT and what we've been doing in the, in the microservice, sorry, in, in Java development regarding authentication, a typical three tier application might look like, like this. So we have a web tier, we have a business logic tier, and we have a data tier. So when somebody comes in, they authenticate through the web tier and, and that will trigger a, a, an HTTP session for us, and that's where we'll store all the credentials. And that credentials is then passed through the different layers, and the, but the credential could check with a, an external source, like an LDAP source, or for, for, for your user credentials, but it's passed through the different layers depending to give you whether you are allowed to have access to different certain things. So that was, for example, in IEB, you could annotate an IEB saying roles allowed to execute that, so in that case, that, that's exactly how, how it worked. But in the microservices world, things are changing. So in the microservices world, it's, it's not as, as typical anymore to have a web front end. And it, 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 instead, we could have an HTML5 application, meaning we load the application once, and then we talk directly to different services. We could talk through gateways and other things, etc. And that, that means that we, we all of a sudden we can't we we can't rely on passing security tokens between layers internally in an application server anymore. So, in this case, we, we that's why by J, J, by JSON Web Token became so popular because JSON Web Tokens allows us to share um, to share tokens between this instead. So I'm going to show a bit on how, how that looks like. So the auth process a bit simplified, but basically looks like this. Somebody will access access and so, so to actually the first step to securing microservices is to authenticate the user and it's done by by adding uh, by by, uh, by authenticating through the key cloak server so when when the user is authenticated through the key to a cloak server they will get a token back so that token can then be passed on to other services so we're going to talk more about exactly how that looks like and see a demo in a minute but just to, to give you an example here, so one thing that, that we do provide in Keycloak is a JavaScript adapter. So you don't really have to care about how that's handling. All you have to do is that if you use the JavaScript uh, library that Keycloak provides, it will automatically authenticate, it will authenticate the user when they log in, provide the credentials, and then it will pass the token when we access other services down the road. So, so when we secure the, the tokens, the services themselves, we um, uh, we then want to we want to have a we want to have a way to uh, verify the token. So each service will verify the token with the Keycloak server. That's how SSL works. And what we do here is we, we have different adapters in Keycloak. We have Java, we have one for native Java applications. We have one for Java EE, one for Tomcat, uh, one for Spring Boot, one for Wildfly Swarm, one for Node.js, and we have client-side JavaScript, etc. The list goes on. 
uh, and on. So we have basically really, really nice and easy plug-in adapters that you can plug into your services and, and get the possibility to verify tokens from users. So let's see how this looks like in, uh, in action. So I'm gonna step out. So, so here I have, let's actually, we have, here I have a very simple REST application within in Wildfly Swarm. So I started Wildfly Swarm here. And, and what it does, it's basically returning a list of products. So it's a product catalog type of service. So if I used, I can use something called Postman here. And I can, using no authentication, there's no headers in here with authentication here. Um, the, I, I do have an authentication, but actually let's delete that one. Let's delete all the content in here, so we make sure that we don't have that. It's not checked here. But what happens is that if I hit this service, it's going to give me a product list back. So that's an unsecure execution of a, web, of a service. So how does it look when we secure this then? Well, the first thing is we have, in Wildfire Swarm, we have something called, called fractions. So, and we'll, there's also auto detection of fractions. So it's very simple to do this. Basically, all I've done is I added in the POM file. I added a reference dependency to the key cloak project here. The next thing I've done is I've, I've cheated a bit and I pre-configured some Wildfly Swarm settings here. So basically what I've done here is I've setting and configuring that our catalog var is getting deployed. It's gonna have the security constraints that everything that hits API uh, and a get requires role user. And then I have a bit of metadata around how, how the server can verify the token to the key cloak server here. So changing this and saving the files, we can restart our Wildfly Swarm. So we're waiting for it to start, yes. And it's not long now. <laughs> so here we go. Wildfly Swarm is ready. So now Let's try to hit this, this, uh, this URL. And if I do that, you now can now see, maybe a bit, you see that I, I'm unauthorized. So I'm not allowed to hit this endpoint anymore. So how do we do that? So I'm gonna fake being a JavaScript client or being a client on that. So I'm gonna use basically, a, an, 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 I'm gonna do a post, uh, a RESTful post uh, uh, query to uh, to the key cloak server and ask for an authentication process. I'm gonna pass in a couple of things in here. So let's see if I can. Oh, here we go. So I'm gonna pass in some that, what grant type I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a password, clear text password here, uh, our client ID, and then I have the username and the password. So that's my user and that's my password. So if I hit the server with this, I get, an, uh, I get a Jade, some web token um, back. And from here, basically what, what happens when a, in a, on a client side is that we take the access token here, which is the interesting part, and we put that into, for example, a header. This could be a part of a cookie, it could be part of a, a, a post parameter, a query parameter, but the easiest one is to use it as a header. And this is how most libraries are using JSON web tokens and it adds this, this token in here. So now, if I hit send, hopefully we're gonna see our product list again. So we now authenticate it against the services. And we can also use this from, from service to service communication. It's just as easy to take this token and pass it along in a, in a, in a, in a RESTful service case. So it's very easy to do that. So that's why JSON Web Token is becoming more and more popular and also becoming more and more de facto standards for microservices security. So, to summarize, so Keycloak and Red Hat SSO provides open source identity and access management using SAML or OpenID. OpenID is the, as, a, as a broader standard than just JSON Web Token, but it's using, underneath it's using JSON Web Token. And 
using Keycloak or uh, Red Hat SSO, it's very easy to secure your services. There's multiple adapters for different programming languages, and it's very easy to pass this token around. Either you use a library for that, or you use it. You do it yourself. So, so that's um, that's all for me, and I, I want to thank you for attending. Cool.